welcome to St John's Church here in Ashley on this Pentecost Sunday. The Sunday that is all about God's Holy Spirit. When we think of the Holy Spirit, we think of the overpowering, the inspiring, the life-giving, creative dynamic of God. The Holy Spirit is all this and more. We recognize the hand of the Holy Spirit in the creation and in our Lord when he became a human being. We recognize the Holy Spirit in the rushing mighty wind and the tongues of flame which the apostles experienced at Pentecost. And in all the tremendous events in the whole history of the Christian church, the unmistakable signs of God's presence are truly awe-inspiring, as Moses recognized at the burning bush. The Holy Spirit founded the church on the first wits and is always present in the church as our Lord promised. The reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound as of a mighty rushing wind that filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared to them tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. There were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven and it wasn't when it was noised abroad the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language they were all amazed and marveled saying to one another are not all these which speak Galileans how hear we every man in his own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt, and in the areas of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying to one another, What meaneth this? Others were mocking and said, But Peter, standing up, and the eleven said to them, Men of Judah and all ye who dwell in Jerusalem, be this known to you and hearken to my words. These are not drunken as you suppose, being but the third hour of the day. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters die and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days the Spirit, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapour, and the sun shall turn dark, 
and the moon into blood before that great and notable day shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It shall come to pass. This is the word of the Lord. Ten days ago, as Jesus ascended into heaven, he left us with a promise. It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This is his promise to us all. Just as then and now, we will continue to learn through the Spirit how to live a life of faith and that we will be equipped for the tasks ahead. And as we celebrate Pentecost, we think about that point in time when the first disciples received this gift, the torch of truth and faith. But what does the torch look like? How will we know if we have it or recognise it in someone else? In that upper room, the entrance of a spirit was recognised as a physical manifestation. It was described thus, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as, as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. Obviously, as in Jesus' day, walking around with a living flame sprouting out of the top of our heads would not be practical on health and safety grounds alone. But those disciples were changed on the day of Pentecost. Not only were they given the ability to speak to people from all over the known world in their own language, the coming of the Spirit transformed the disciples from fear to confidence. It gave them the courage to go out into Jerusalem and to declare the resurrection of Jesus to a city whose people had so recently called for his death. At the heart of the gospel, we are reminded that each one of us has the potential to be a shining light in our present darkness. And it doesn't have to be a huge dramatic venture, but something that we might see as being small and insignificant can make a difference to someone's life. A friend of mine, who's also an Anglican priest, shared a story with me that happened a couple of weeks ago. She and her husband decided to go to Trenton Gardens for lunch. She was off duty, so she wasn't wearing her cler clerical collar and just wanted to spend a quiet hour with her husband, enjoying a nice lunch and the lovely surroundings of the outside seating area before returning to the busyness of parish ministry. Politely, they nodded a greeting to the couple on the nearest socially distanced table before settling down to inspect the menu. The gentleman on the neighbouring table seemed determined to strike up a conversation with her and quietly she prayed under her breath, please Lord, can't I just have an hour off? The man then went on to explain that he'd just received a terminal cancer diagnosis and was afraid about what his future held. My friend spent the next couple of hours listening to this couple who were not practising Christians, and she talked to them about our faith and what our Christian hope means. Before she left, they prayed together. Was that a chance encounter or a God-sent moment? Did the man on the nearby table perhaps accost any random stranger to share his sad story? Or did he recognise in my friend a warm and welcoming light that invited the intrusion? As followers of Christ, we've all been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. So please don't hide yours under a bushel. Let it shine. Amen.
Loving God, we ask for the gift of your Holy Spirit to help us pray as we ought. Fill our lives with the wonder of the Holy Spirit and fill our leaders with talents and discernment to seek the common good. Fill with your love those who are tiring of the battle against injustice and oppression and those exhausted by the struggle of poverty and hunger. Lord, your Spirit is with us. Hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, set our hearts on fire with the warmth of your love. Help us as part of your universal church to reach out to others with the good news of Christ. We pray for our ministry team, David, Sarah and Roger, and all who help our church to be open and welcoming to all who come within our doors. Guide us in our relationships with each other, within the church, within our families, with our neighbours and draw us together in your fellowship of love and joy and holiness. Lord, your Spirit is with us. Hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, we pray for all who are weak and those who are ill, those who cannot cope on their own, those known to us in particular need or trouble, or who ask for our prayers. We remember all of those named in the grapevine and pray that they may know your hope and comfort, your power and assurance. Lord, your Spirit is with us. Hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, we pray for those who have died, and those whose lives are darkened by sorrow and mourning. We commend to your everlasting love those who have died. Lord, when we share in grief and suffering, may we walk in compassion and understanding. Lord, your Spirit is with us. Holy Spirit, we look for and know your presence in our daily lives, in our times of pain, in our worship. Create new life in your people and renew and refresh us as we turn in obedience and faith to you. We pray for each other as we prepare to start the week ahead. We ask that in all we do, we may wake, walk more closely with you at our side, safe in the knowledge that your fatherly love and care knows no bounds. Merciful Father, 
accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The spirit of truth lead you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.